What's going on guys, Joshua Tracks RC, and in today's video, it's gonna be a little bit of a different video because this is not my RC that I'm gonna be fixing today. It's someone else's, it's a mutual friend that I know, and he gave me everything for it. It's all taken apart, I haven't touched really anything on it. And he was stating that he lost all power to the rear wheels and only the front ones were turning. So I looked through all the parts he gave me. I looked at the rear diff first. Everything looked pretty decent there. I did notice abnormal wear on the ring gear itself on the rear diff. But other than that, the rear end was completely fine. And then I looked at the rear drive shafts, which are upgraded to MIP shafts. And those are fine as well. There's no broken pins or anything. I also checked the spur gear, make sure all that was good. Basically just going down the line of where the drive line is and uh, seeing what could fail and what was possibly loose or cracked or stripped out on the rear end. But after I checked all that, I didn't see anything that would cause no power to the rear wheels. So then I took off both of the tires and I realized on this tire here, the Proline hub was actually stripped out and it had a pretty decent sized crack in it. It's just got a big crack going down the center line right there and then the hex is all stripped out. So basically the wheel hex was just spinning in the rim. And this Stampede 4x4 does have aluminum hexes on it so the hex is still fine but we just needed a new hub and that was the only thing wrong with this RC. So to fix the broken wheel hex in the rim. I got the Proline replacement hexes right here. So we're gonna be fixing that. But since the owner of this RC has a upgraded brushless power system from Castle in here, it's gonna be faster and has more power than the stock brush system that he previously had. And with the abnormal wear going on on the rear diff gear, I pitched the idea to him to upgrade all of his diff gears, which is what all this is for. So I ordered the spiral cut heavy duty ring and pinions for the front and the rear. And the rear one here is going to replace the wore down ring gear in the rear and then the fronts I actually haven't looked at them yet but we're gonna see what the condition of that one is I'm assuming it's gonna be fine but it's just a preventative maintenance thing that's gonna be nice to have as a peace of mind in this stampede 4x4 and I should also mention that if you decide to get these for a stampede 4x4 you have to make sure that you get them at the same time for the front and the rear you can't just put the front in or you can't just put the rear in because they have a faster gear ratio than the stock diff gears so if you were to let's just say put the rear in the rear end is going to be spinning at a faster rate than the front and that can cause abnormal wear on the tires it can cause overheating on the electronics because there's more strain it's going to cause more strain on the drive line and that's something that you just do not want on an rc car or really anything they're not cheap it's about 80 dollars for both but i've never broken one and i've been beating them up in my stampede 4x4 for a few years now so we're going to be installing these today and then we're also going to be doing the exo one diff mod on the front and the rear of this RC. I only have the X01 diff mod installed on the rear, but I also don't plan to put anything more powerful in my Stampede, or as the owner of this RC would like to do that in the future, he wants more power out of it, whether it's flashing the ESC on a computer, because you can do that with the castle stuff, I believe. But either way, he's looking to get more power out of this thing somewhere or another in the future. So the X01 internals are just going to hold everything together a lot better than these stock internals, because if you look look right here there's like an i-beam kind of thing that sits in the center of everything it holds everything so it can't flex whereas the stock gears can and that's where you can potentially chip a tooth if the diff cup flexes it could make everything off center and then that's how you can strip something out but the xl ones don't do that in my experience and they last a lot longer plus the gears themselves are just a little bit bigger so to do the xl one diff mod in the front and the rear you need the same stuff you're going to need the internal gears right here and then you're going to need two of the diff cups and then you're also going to need these screws looks like they're an m2.5 by 0.45 by 12 millimeter socket head cap screw i'll put a link to all these products down below in the description so you can pick them up for yourself if this is something that you're interested in and the last thing you're going to need is new diff lube if you don't have any on hand i like running 30,000 weight it's perfect for all my stuff and i'm sure that the owner of this rc is going to be perfect perfectly fine with this because it's basically the stock diff weight and uh, yeah it's gonna work perfect so that's everything that we're gonna be installing in this video we got the x01 diffs we got the new pro line hub and then we also had the new ring and pinion gears to install as well but I think the first thing that we're gonna do is install the new pro line hub because that's super easy it's just six screws so I already have the old hex removed and installing the new one is the same process we're just gonna open up the bag here and you get four hexes total you get 
get two of the wide and two of the narrow. Uh, the narrows are completely useless on a Stampede 4x4. They don't fit, but we are able to use the wides and it just sits right in there. And then you just use the six screws and tighten everything down. And when you're tightening these, you wanna do them in a star pattern so that everything sits nice and flush. So I'm just gonna get this one started almost all the way. That's about good right there. You can see it's not all the way in. It's just a little bit of room there. And then you're gonna want to go directly across, tighten this one down the same amount as the other one. And now we are going to grab another one and you're gonna wanna either go up this way or down this way. Basically, you just wanna be in a star pattern going directly across like that. Then we're gonna grab another one being directly across from the one we just did. And then we're gonna go up from that one. And then we have the last one. So now that we have all of the bolts started, you can see they're all at kind of different heights. I think these two are the most noticeable. You can see this one's just a little bit taller. So now I'm just gonna go around, make sure they're all at the same height, making sure not to crank them down all the way. I'm just gonna get them all started so then they're just touching the edge of the plastic. So I'm gonna stop there with that one, go across, gonna stop there, go across to the next one, and then stop there, and then just do that until all of them are at the same level. Now the reason why I do that is so then when I go around for the last time, they all are torqued to the same or about the same. So now we're gonna start at one, do one, two, three, go across, one, two, three, go up, one, two, three, go down here, one, two, three, up again, one, two, and that's all the way tight. So then one, two, that one's all the way tight. One, two, that one's all the way tight. One, two, and then I think I've actually forgot about these. Two, three, four, five. Yep, I forgot about these two. One, two, three, four, five. And now they're all at the same tightness. And the reason why you want all these torqued the same is because if you have one really tight and one really loose, the hub is going to sit not parallel to the rim, so it's going to be kind of crooked, and then your wheel's going to wobble all over the place. So that's not what you want. It's going to affect the handling, plus it's not going to be as strong. So we got the new hub installed. Now we just got to work on the diff gears. So this is all the stock components of the rear diff. Now we actually won't be using any of these components for the new diffs besides the bearings. So I'm just go ahead, take them off, then we can start putting together the new diff gears. But real quick, I do want to show you guys what the condition of this gear is like. It's very faint, but it is noticeable. You can just see the line that goes all the way across the entire gear. And what that is, is just abnormal wear, like I said, probably from the case flexing. And here's a good look at it too. You can see where it dips down right there. So that's one example of abnormal wear on a diff gear. Another example would be a tooth that is completely chipped, which I'm not noticing on this gear and another example is and this might be very hard for you guys to tell but if I run my finger across here I actually feel sharp edges which is not good and you could kind of see right here on this tooth how it comes in right there and then this side is straight you can kind of see it in the reflection there just each one has sharp edges so this gear is definitely not wearing right and that's due to the fact that everything just isn't held together there's a lot of movement going on in the diff and that's where the x01 diffs come into play it just holds everything together a lot better and then the upgraded ring and pinion that we're going to install all right guys so what you just saw was me talking about the old gears and how the x01 gears are going to hold everything together a lot more that's still all true but i noticed as right i was about to start talking about the new ring and pinion they sent me the wrong ones these ones are not straight cut and if i zoom in you can see there's literally debris on them so they've been used but the box literally says it's for machined spiral cut gears and that's the right part number I need I think so yeah I'm gonna have to return these rear ring and pinion gears they're not the right ones the front ones though do look like the correct ones you can see the curved shape right there of the ring gear which is what we need so what you guys are gonna see next is how to take out the front diff on the stampede 4x4 and then I'm gonna start rebuilding that one but yeah we're gonna have to put the rear diff on pause at the moment so to take out the front front diff the first thing that you're gonna want to do is remove these two bolts right up here there is one right there and then the other one is right here uh, they're already out for me and then there's also one right here that you're gonna want to take out which is already out for me and then there is one right here I just have to take this one out so now you just want to pull everything apart actually there is one more right down here I'm just gonna take this out for now 
doesn't really matter what screw you want to do here. You can do this one or this one. I would refrain from doing this one so then you won't have to center the servo again. But I think this one right here is going to be the easiest. I'm going to set this off to the side along with that screw. Now we're going to take out these three screws right here. Pull off the front bumper. There's also two screws right here. This one's already out for some reason. So there's just one. Now we can just pull the whole front bumper assembly off. We are going to remove this screw right right here, right in the center, to pull off this hinge pin brace. Just slide the brace right off, and then we can pull out these suspension pins as well. Pull the suspension arms off, and then there's two set screws holding on the drive shafts. I'm gonna slide the drive shafts out, maybe. These are tight. Well, we'll worry about those in a second. But let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more room. We're gonna take off the bottom skid plate by taking off these two screws right here. Now we can slide the skid plate out. We can't slide off all the way, so we have to take out these two screws right here to get the bell cranks off the steering posts. And there are two little washers, so make sure you keep track of those. And then we can pull off the bell cranks. Don't lose the little bushings either. You want to make sure those are popped back in. Now we can set the skid plate off to the side, and as you can see, all the dirt in there. We're going to clean all that up, make sure it's all nice and clean so there's not any debris on it when we install the new gears, because we don't want any dirt in the diff case. There you can see the diff in there, and good thing I also got those new gears in the front, because I'm seeing a few chips on the teeth on the diff gear, so we're going to have to take a closer look at that and see what the actual condition of it is like in a second. Now we're going to take out these four screws screws right here holding the shock tower to the diff case there's one right here one here one here and one here so with that last one almost out everything's just kind of fall apart we got the front diff case right there there is metal shavings in there i can see you see how it's like a little bit sparkly the front diff was on its way out for sure so now i am going to disconnect it from the drive shafts just pull it right out i don't know why these drive shafts aren't coming off well it looks like there's one more set screw over here and now that one should come off i don't know why this side isn't coming off oh there we go all right it was really tight now we need to pull off the bearings of course we're going to be reusing those and i don't even have to take apart this diff gear we don't need anything from it but i do want to show you guys really quick the condition of the teeth because this one actually looks worse than the rear so for starters you can see all the shine on the outside there if i just run my finger across that pick up some of it you can see it's all shiny that's metal shavings so that's not good and then i'm trying to find the tooth that i saw there's one right there there's a chunk taken out of it looks like two in a row and then the edges just like the rear end are all sharp you can see there just how wore down they are they're not that pointy so it was definitely on its way out there you can see that one there there's a huge chunk taken out right by the edge of my fingernail where it's that copper color and yeah just overall you can see it's not in the best shape here's a really bad spot right here right where the tip of my finger is you can see just how wore down all that is so this gear was definitely on its way out and i would have only gave this thing a few months and it would have been completely stripped out so that's the thing about these stampede 4x4 diffs you don't know until it's too late when they're going out it's better just to upgrade right away people say that these stampede 4x4 diffs are pretty strong i completely disagree i think that they're fine on 2s in my opinion but once you go up to that 3s battery they just do not last they wear out fast definitely not good so we're not going to be using this diff at all i'm just going to put in the extra parts to give back to the owner of this rc but we can set that off to the side for now and now we can start building the new diffs but let's real quick inspect this pinion gear I'm just going to take our 1.5 millimeter wrench and loosen it up take that out slide this gear off and here's our pinion gear let's see how bad it is yeah just from a visual perspective it does not look bad at all and that's what i have noticed about the ring and pinions on stampedes the pinion does get some of the backlash of like the shavings from the ring gear so it's going to have shavings on it just because they're constantly touching but i'm not noticing any abnormal wear so that's the plus to the pinion gears at least so we won't be using this either we're going to set that right off to the side and another thing is look at how dirty this diff case is on the inside just all the metal in there i could just feel it so i'm honestly surprised that these diffs weren't giving the owner more problems because they are definitely on the way out like i've said probably a million times now but that's why i'm doing this video so then you guys know what to expect if you own a four-wheel drive traxxas vehicle because a lot of people do not think that the diffs 
are gonna go out anytime soon. And that's really why I made this video, so then you guys can learn from my experience. And while I'm upgrading this, I could show you guys tips and tricks on what I've learned over the years with my Stampede. So I'm gonna set this gear off to the side. We are gonna be using it again. And I'm gonna get everything set up for the new diffs. So when you're assembling diffs, what I like to do is make sure my hands are clean. You don't wanna contaminate any of the teeth when you're working on it. You don't wanna get any dirt on the inside because over time, that's just gonna wear down the teeth even more. So make sure your hands are clean. Lay down a nice paper towel that's all clean as well. Or just clean your workbench, but I'm lazy, so paper towel is gonna do. And the parts that we need for the front is this part right here, 5379R. It's the front pinion and the ring gear that are spiral cut. And then we're gonna need the front diff case from the XL1. We're gonna need the internal gears from the XL1. And then we're gonna need these screws, which I talked about earlier. And then, of course, diff fluid. I have 30,000 weight, so I'm just gonna open this up right now so then it's all ready. So here's everything we're working with as for parts. Um, it looks like everything's here from what I remember, but I think I might be missing one of these blue O-rings, but that's okay. I'll just take one out of the old diffs if necessary. But the way that these diffs work is you got your ring gear and your diff cup, and that's like mainly what you see. But in the diff cup, you're going to take one of these black gears and then one of the blue O-rings slide it over the shaft right there and then what i like to do is you take your diff lube and then we're going to screw on the nozzle i forgot you have to cut the tip off so then you apply some of the lubricant and then just work it around just to give it a little bit of lubrication to stop any leaks slide it into the diff cup right there push it all the way in, make sure it's all spinning, which it is. Now we are going to take this I-beam, put this giant pin down the center of it, just like that. These two gears sit on either side of the I-beam, riding on the pin, just like that. I'm gonna set that off to the side for now. And then there's these two little spacer tabs, I'm not really sure what they're called, but they have these two teeth on the end. And the teeth are gonna face up toward the open side of the diff, and we are going to put one on this side of the gear, and then one on the other side making sure they're still facing up and then we want to put this whole assembly into the diff cup holding everything like this with the I-beam facing this way and then we got two screw holes over here and two over here and you're gonna line everything up which is sometimes easier said than done because it all likes to rotate make sure you push it down all the way and you should not see anything over the top and it should all spin nice and free and this is where you can really see where that I-beam support and the metal tabs come into play it just adds a lot more rigidity, it adds more bulkiness, and it fills in all that empty space that is usually in the differential to eliminate any sort of flex, which is what I've found is really necessary on a stampede. Now we are going to take our 30,000 weight diff fluid and just fill it in. You're going to do a little bit at a time, work it in, maybe spread it around, and then once you get it full, you want to make sure that you let it sit because gravity is going to pull all the fluid to the bottom, and then you may have to refill, plus it's going to get all the air bubbles out. I'll set up a quick time lapse so then you guys can see just how much it drops. So as you guys saw from that short time lapse, it just settles and uh, we're gonna add a little bit more because now it doesn't even look like it's full whatsoever. It's maybe about halfway full, so we're gonna add more diff fluid and do the same thing again. And we do that until it is completely full. Now my definition of completely full is kind of like where the threads just start. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'll show you guys where it sits when I'm done. And that's usually what I like. All right, so I think that's as much as it's gonna go down. It's been sitting for like 15 minutes and you can see where the level of it is. It's not all the way to the top at this edge right here. It's more just around where the big cavity where all the gears sit. I'm pretty happy with this. Although you do see this one bubble right here that just popped. So we're gonna let that fill in so i think i'm actually going to let this sit for a little bit because of that bubble there's probably more air that still needs to come to the surface so we're just going to let it sit and really the goal with this is you want it to be to the top with no air and you want it to be completely settled so then you know what's actually at the top because you don't want the fluid level too low you also don't want it too high to where it's going to be a pain to get the seal on and the ring gear on and then there's just going to be too much pressure in here it's not going to spin as freely but let's go ahead and add a little bit more fluid. Alright, so it's been sitting for probably 20-30 minutes now, and as you can see, it went down a little bit, not much, but I don't know if you guys are able to tell, but there are air bubbles. You can kind of see them. So 
I'm gonna have to let it sit just a little bit longer. This is a very long process and it's a very boring process, but I think while I'm waiting for this to go down, I'm gonna start cleaning parts like this with all the metal shavings. And I'm also gonna do this one right here, basically just the two halves of the diff case. And same thing with the skid plate. And the way I like to clean them is I like to take them to the sink, wash them down, rinse them down with water. And then I like to scrub them too with an old toothbrush. And then after that, you dry them off really good. And then that gets rid of all the dirt. It gets rid of all the metal shavings. So I'm gonna do all that while I'm waiting for the air bubbles to come to the surface and pop. All right, so I got all these parts cleaned up and this looks like it is about done. There's still just a few more air bubbles, but it looks like they're all about to pop. So I'm still gonna let it sit just for a little bit longer. But while I was washing up all of these parts right here, I noticed that there was a lot of metal shavings on, I think it was the front one here, just an insane amount. I mean, it was an understatement that these things needed to be cleaned really good. I really spent a lot of time on these. It's not perfect by any means. You're still gonna get some of the debris in the cracks that's all the way in there, but there's really nothing you can do about that. It's not gonna harm anything. But I did notice while I was drying the this piece right here, it actually has a few cracks in it. So I'm gonna have to get a new one to replace it. There's a big one down here, and then the really big one is on this side. You can see it starts all the way by the bearing right there. It goes all the way down there by the bolt hole too. So this is gonna need to be replaced as well. I did look at the other half of the diff case, and this one looks perfectly fine. So this one can be installed again. All right, now I think the diff cup is ready to be put together. So now what we need to do is take the seal right here and you want to line up each of the four holes with the four holes on the diff cup so we're just going to line it all up just plop it into place make sure it's all sitting nice and flat not overlaying any of the edges so once you have everything lined up like that you're going to want to take your ring gear and then this is the fun part you have to line everything up perfectly and it sometimes takes more than one try so right now i just have it sitting on top and you just want to make sure it looks pretty level which which mine does and now we're gonna do the fun part of screwing these four bolts in now you want to be very gentle with this because when I did this upgrade on my stampede I had to redo it a few times because when I was done the ring gear sat crooked on the diff cup so I couldn't put it in like that so you just want to get one started you're gonna want to do this in a star pattern so that it all sits nice and flush now we got that one started and you'll feel it once it gets through the o-ring it'll start getting a little bit tighter and it'll actually be in the plastic then i'm gonna do the last one here perfect now all of these are started looks like everything is still sitting pretty level so now we gotta tighten all these down we're just gonna do a little bit at a time just like the rim that we did earlier in the video so i'm gonna start with this one one two three go here one two three go to this one one two three Three, and then this one is last one two three and I'm just gonna do that until they're about halfway and then I'll update you guys on how level the gear is on the diff cup all right well I just realized that I forgot to add another gear so the ring gear has got to come off again and also another little update I told you guys earlier that I might have been missing an o-ring I'm not and I also found out there's another little washer that I don't know where it goes so I'm gonna find out where that goes and then I also of course have another o-ring right here so more the story see what's actually up here because it was just hidden behind the cardboard part but according to these instructions it looks like this washer is supposed to go on this gear right here so that means everything has got to come out again but of course I'd rather it be done right so I'm gonna work on taking this all out and then I'll show you guys how the rest goes together so I was able just to push this whole assembly out as it's still covered in the diff lube but it looks like this o-ring has to come off and then the washer goes behind it so that one comes off and then this metal washer goes on and then we could put the o-ring back on and then slide everything back into the diff case so so that's how it's actually supposed to be made now i'm gonna have to add more diff fluid and just so i don't forget i'm gonna take the other side put some diff lube on the o-ring put this o-ring over this one spider gear and then put it right there through the ring gear and that's what i forgot earlier so now we just gotta wait for all this to settle and then it's the same process like i mentioned earlier to get the ring gear on we gotta line everything up again and then i'll put you guys back on once these screws are halfway down like i said earlier all right so i got the ring gear almost all the way installed these just need to be tightened down a little bit more but some things that i noticed is i actually had to take off the ring gear resituate the o-ring and line everything up again a lot more this time than i did the first time 
after I added that one shim and the gear up here. Just I think because the way diff goes together, the teeth have to be lined up perfectly for the ring gear to sit right. So the first time I did it, it sat crooked, which is what I wanted to show you guys. When it sits crooked, the ring gear up here is not parallel to the edge of the diff cup. So basically the top portion sits like this, where the diff cup is straight. And that's going to cause the ring gear to basically wobble on the diff cup while it's moving. So one way that I found to uh, make sure you don't tighten it down when it's not straight on the diff cup is to hold everything really tight like this, resituate, hold it like this then, and then grab a small tool that fits in here and just rotate it. And if it spins, you're good. And that will also allow everything to line up. If it doesn't, maybe take the ring gear off, move this a few times, try it again, just because you need this one spider gear to sit well with the other internal gears so then everything can tighten down properly and you don't get the crooked ring gear. So mine actually looks really good. If I were to spin it, you can see that everything is nice and straight. So I'm good to tighten these screws down all the way. All right, so this diff is all put together. Everything spins nice and smooth. If I grab this Allen wrench and then spin it works really well now that this diff is all put together what i can do now is grab this pinion gear and then something i like to do is grab diff fluid put it around this bearing just makes it spin a lot smoother and then we need to grab the bearings that we left i'm gonna clean the outside of them here just wipe them on the towel we're gonna put the thin walled one on the side with the diff cup and then we're gonna put the other one on this side and then it could only fit in the diff case one way and as you can see it's all spinning nice and smooth and these gears are just a lot smoother than the factory straight cut gears now from this point i'm going to add some grease but i don't think i'm going to do that yet just because i don't have the front case to put on so the front end is kind of at a pause right now and so is the rear so i really can't do anything until the new stuff comes in so i'll put you guys back on when all of it gets here or at least when one gets here so i could start on it all right so the new ring and pinion finally came in for the rear end and when I figured out what happened with the old gears that I got someone actually bought the upgraded ones I believe and then they took the stock gears out painted them black so they look similar and then just shipped them back so they got these gears for free that's just real shady and I don't know I don't know how I feel about that I guess more power to them but at the same time it kind of pushed this project back so these are the correct gears as you can see they are spiral cut so we're gonna open these up and then we're gonna start assembling the rear diff I'm still waiting on the front front diff case to come in but it should be coming in later today so I may be able to just finish this whole project so here's the actual diff gear and it's just so much more beefy than the stock one so there's the x01 internal gears it's the same thing as the front it's basically the same process to put together the rear diff as well so maybe I'm not even gonna really show it so here's everything for the rear diff um, again it's the same process as the front so I'm gonna put it all together off camera because you guys already know how to do the front and I'll put you guys back on when we're ready to install it into the rear diff housing. Alright guys so the rear diff is all put in it all moves nice and freely and another thing that I can't stress enough you want to make sure that the ring gear right here is completely parallel with the top of the diff cups and as you can see when mine turns everything is perfectly straight and you don't want the gear to be going like that when it's trying to drive it's just going to strip it out it's not going to be good but now that it's all put together what we can do is clean off these bearings a little bit just gonna wipe the sides of them just so we don't contaminate any of the gears and then we're gonna put the cleaner side towards the gear just like that we got the diff all put together now we need to clean the housing we can actually take this off here I believe yeah these two screws are already out so we can pull this off and I'm also gonna wash this too because this is where the spur gear sits and there's a ton of sand in there and we don't want that getting on the spur gear because that could strip it out prematurely as well just from the extra grit but we're gonna work on cleaning these mainly along with that one piece because as you can see there's not really a lot of metal shavings in there that I'm seeing there definitely is some not as bad as the front but there's just a lot of just small dirt particles that we have to get out plus we're gonna clean the outside too because it's just caked on with dirt and dust so what I'm gonna do is pop out this bearing since we have good access to it I'm also gonna clean that too because it's just filthy yeah this bearing is just caked with grease and so yeah I'm gonna work on getting all this cleaned up and put you guys back on when it's done so we could start installing the rear differential all right i just finished cleaning up all the parts this time i actually used a little bit of dawn dish soap where it was really greasy and it looks brand new in there
in there. So I'm gonna definitely start doing that in the future. But now we can finally start putting the rear differential back together. And what we're gonna do first is take the front half of the diff housing and put this bearing right in that hole right there. And then we're gonna take the pinion gear right there, slide it in that bearing. And then we're gonna take the diff again, just like the front, it only goes in one way. And now we can take the front half right here, or I should say the rear half, and put those two halves together. And then we're gonna grab our shock tower, just wipe the bottom edge of it, cause that is kind of exposed to the diff. You can see there's a little bit of dirt on the bottom and you can see the diff in there a little bit through that crack. So I'm just gonna wipe the bottom edge, make sure there's no dirt on it. That should be good right there. Now we're just going to line everything up and then put these four screws back in and that will hold these two halves together. Next we're gonna grease up the gears and you want even coverage over all the teeth. So if I spin the diff gear you can see everything's covered and it's also greased the pinion gear right up top. So that looks like a pretty good amount to me. So we're gonna put the cap back on and then we can put this whole assembly back onto the skid plate here. which It should just slide in just like that and then we're gonna insert these two screws. Now we're gonna install the drive shafts. These ones are MIP so it's a a little bit different because there's two set screws on each side. So to install them, you're going to slide the drive shaft and then you wanna make sure you line up the hole right there with the hole on the end of the drive shaft. So then it looks like that when it's all put together where you can see right through both. Now we're gonna take one set screw, make sure to put some blue thread locker on it since it is going into the metal shaft and then thread it right in. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side since it's the MIP shaft. If it's a stock drive shaft or another company that's after market you only need one set screw so now that this side is in we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side so now we're gonna start installing the rear suspension components um, the first thing that you need to do is line up the drive shafts and then we're gonna insert this pin right here just slide it in just like that now we're going to put the camber link on and it's just one bolt depending on where you had it previously. It looks like this one was right here at the top left corner. Now we're gonna turn it around and install the shock. Again, make sure you remember where it was. It looks like this one was all the way to the left. Guys, I forgot to plug in my microphone after the last few takes. But now that we have the shock installed, uh, this side is all complete. So now we're gonna repeat the same process for the other side, all in the same order. Now I'm gonna install the wheelie bar and rear bumper if you don't have the wheelie bar, it's okay. It's still the same process. But the first thing that we need to do is install this hinge pin brace. And you want the two notches facing downwards. Then you just slide it over the two pins, just like that. And then we just have to slide the rear bumper into place. And there's two screws here. There is one right up here. And then there's two more at the top. All right, so now pretty much the whole rear end is put together, minus the tires. And then we're going to take the spur gear, slide it into the chassis right back there. Make sure it's pressed in all the way and spins freely against the motor. Now just really quick I'm going to loosen the pinion gear and slide it a little bit more towards the motor because it's not perfectly centered on the spur gear there so I'm just going to move it a little bit closer really quick. All right so I got that all fixed it's now centered on the spur gear so now is the fun part which I've kind of mastered it from doing it so many times but the first few times you do this it's very complicated. So you basically want the flat edge of the spur gear right here to be lined up with how you orientated the inside of the pinion gear but we need to put the rear tires on so we're going to get our thread locker put a little bit on the stub axle slide our wheel on make sure it fits in the hex i have to hold the drive shaft just so it fits in there you go now we're going to take our wheel nut tighten it down and do the same thing on the other side all right so now that both of the rear tires are on basically the goal here is to get this part of the spur gear shaft to fit into the pinion on that flat edge because that's what drives everything is that flat edge and then you also need to make sure that the skid plate sits in the chassis like that. You don't want it to be tucked over it like that. It needs to be recessed into that edge. So the way I do it is I kind of go in like this, get the spur gear to fit in there, roll it so then that pinion catches on the spur gear. And then once you get everything together, it should all roll nice and free. And that skid plate should be tucked right under that one part of the chassis. And now we need to put in four screws. There's two right here. And then if we flip it over, there's one here and one right here. All right, now the rear end is basically 
done. Just gonna check to make sure everything rolls nice and smooth, which it does. And uh, yeah, we just have to throw on the gear cover and that's just one screw right here. But as you can tell, it's a little bit dirty under there. So I'm just gonna clean it up really quick. So now the rear end is all finished. I just need to wait on the front diff case to come in. So I'll put you guys back on once it comes in so we can start putting together the whole front end. All right, so the new diff housing just came in. We only need to use the front half of it because that's the only half that was broken. So with the diff in there, and we already got the pinion gear in there as well. So we're just gonna put that back. And then the front half just snaps right on. And now what I'm gonna do is grease these gears. Just like the rear end, I'm gonna use the same white lithium grease. And I think we'll stop there. That looks like a good amount for me. So now we're going to put this on the skid plate. We want the pinion facing towards the post for the bell cranks right here. It all just snaps right in right there. And then there's two screws at the bottom right here. So now we're gonna put the front drive shafts on just like the rear. There's just two set screws on each side. You need to line up the drive shaft in that hole and also make sure to put thread lock on the set screws when you put them back in. Now that the drive shafts are all in and everything's spinning nice and free, we're going to install the gear that goes on the back of the pinion right there. Just line up the hole, make sure you can see right through it. And then it's just a single set screw holding it on. Make sure to put some thread locker on it as well. Now we're gonna make this front end look more of like a front end. We're gonna start installing the steering components and the suspension. I think I'm gonna connect the bell cranks to the post first. So these bell cranks just slide right onto the post. Oh. I know what I did. So that pinion gear actually has to come off. I didn't realize the bell cranks have to go on first. So we gotta pull that off and then we can put the bell cranks on. All right, got that off. Now these should just slide right on. Oh no, well, okay. Looks like these two screws have to come out too. All right, now we can get the whole diff housing out of the way and then the bell cranks will fit on. Gotta make sure those bushings stay in place. Now I'm gonna put the diff housing and that one gear back on. All right, we shouldn't have to take any more of that apart now. We got the bell cranks on and I think now we should definitely attach the drive shafts or put the drive shafts together at least. We just need to slide them into each other just cause the half shafts were taken apart. And now let's put the A-arms together and then it's just a pin on each side. After those two suspension pins, just need to put on the hinge pin brace. We wanna make sure that the curve is facing upwards and the straight edge is downwards. And then we just slide that on, followed by the screw that holds it in place right in the center. I forgot that we need to put the screws in for the bell cranks. It's just two of these screws at the top. Be sure to put those washers on too as well. Now I need to attach the shock tower. Like the rear, it's just two bolts on each side at the bottom bottom of the shock tower. Now I'm gonna throw on the front bumper, just slides right in. And then there's two screws up here, but this RC was actually missing a screw, so I only have one. And then there's three screws right down here. All right, now we can finally attach everything to the rest of the chassis. I do need to put the center drive line back in though. But the only thing we need to worry about with the front when attaching it is making sure this drive gear coming off the pinion lines up with the splines in the center drive line. But that's not too complicated. So I got it all lined up, you can see it's all tires are rolling and now we need to put two screws in to start just two on the top right up here behind the shock tower now we got to flip it over and there's two bolts right here that we need to put in one here and one here i don't know why i said flip it over because they actually go in from the top there's one here right in the battery tray and then the other one is right here in that hole so now that the whole front end is attached we just need to reconnect the steering it's just one bolt right here that we took out and the steering link just attaches to that arm right there all right moment of truth i'm gonna put the car on the stand turn on the radio plug in the battery we got left and right and everything works as it should. So yes, this RC is back up and running to better than how it was. As you guys saw, those front and rear differentials, especially the front to my surprise, those were just on their way out. And the reason why I'm surprised about the front is because the way that the power transfer is on these 110 4x4s from Traxxas, the power transfer is actually more biased towards the rear end. The front doesn't get all of the power and that just has to deal with things from like plastic flexing in the drive line, aluminum, 
twisting like that center drive line so the rear end actually gets more power and from what i saw the rear end actually looked in a little bit better shape than the front judging by all of the metal shavings that was in the front diff case that you guys saw so the reason why i made this video it was more this is what could happen to your stampede 4x4 it happened to mine as well i'm running on 3s lipo but in my opinion and clearly from my experience and other people's experience those diffs stock do not last running 3s with brushless power everything that i installed in today's video i have on my stampede 4x4 mine's this one right here but the only thing that i do not have is the x01 diff mod in the front end because like i said earlier the rear end is gets more of the power so i just wanted to save a little bit of money in that regard when i did the diffs on my stampede and if we compare these trucks side by side they both have very similar upgrades uh, they both have proline trenchers but this one's belted mine does have an upgraded proline body it's the indestructible body so so it does not break but under the hood both running brushless this one's castle this one's vxl both running a 3s lipo mine's not in here at the moment this one has upgraded shocks that are all aluminum mine are stock shocks but they're upgraded with the titanium nitride shafts and the aluminum shock caps i'm running techno rc drive shafts all around this one's running mip this one has rpm arms up front mine has rpm in the front and the rear they're just black so you can't really see them i got the spiral cut gears up front this one does too along with the x01 mod i have the spiral cut gears in the rear along with the x01 mod and this one has the same thing and of course both of them also have the proline extended body mounts which are just awesome that's just a quick rundown there's definitely a few more differences but it's also just a little bit cool to see what other people put on their rcs to make them their own so guys if you have a stampede 4x4 definitely like this video i hope that you guys learned something in this video that maybe you didn't learn before maybe if you're running on 3s you'll check your diffs to see what the condition is like because now you know what to look for so guys if you found value in this video definitely give it a like share with others so i can grow my channel and with that i will see you guys in the next video I, I, I